Have you ever considered what the odds are of you existing genetically just as you are? It turns out that when taking into consideration the astonishing number of possibilities, including parents meeting, grandparents, and generations before them, and also adding in the vast number of sperm and ova in the possible combination over a lifetime of marital acts, of all those generations, it would seem that the odds of me existing just as I do are 1 in 400 trillion. With the odds of winning the lottery at 1 in 300 million, that means that the likelihood of you being born equates to winning the lottery 1.33 million times. It's clear that we live in an amazing universe. Have you ever wondered why it exists? Why does anything at all exist? Gottfried Leibniz wrote the first question, which should rightly be asked. Why is there something rather than nothing? He came to the conclusion that the explanation is found in God. But is this reasonable? His conclusion is summarized by three claims. Number one, everything that exists has an explanation of its existence. Number two, if the universe has an explanation of its existence, then the explanation is God. And number three, the universe exists. When we consider all of these claims together, we can logically conclude that the explanation of the universe's existence is God. If the first three premises are true, then the conclusion is unavoidable. But are they more plausibly true than false? The third premise is undeniable for anyone seeking truth. But what about the first premise? Why not say that the universe is just there and that's all? No explanation needed? End of discussion. Well, imagine you and a friend are hiking in the woods and come across a shiny sphere lying on the ground. You would naturally wonder how it came to be there, and you'd think it's odd if your friend said, there's no reason or explanation for it. Stop wondering. It just is. And if the ball were bigger, it would still require an explanation. In fact, if the ball were the size of the universe, the change in its size wouldn't remove the need for an explanation. Indeed, curiosity about the existence of the universe seems scientific and intuitive. Someone might say, if everything that exists needs an explanation, what about God? Doesn't he need an explanation? And if God doesn't need an explanation, then why does the universe need an explanation? To explain this, Leibniz makes a key distinction between things that exist necessarily and things that exist contingently. Things that exist necessarily exist by necessity of their own nature. It's impossible for them not to exist. Many mathematicians think that abstract objects like numbers and sets exist like this. They are not caused to exist by something else. They just exist by necessity of their own nature. Things that exist contingently are caused to exist by something else. Most of the things we're familiar with exist contingently. They do not have to exist. They only exist because something else caused them to exist. If your parents had never met, you wouldn't exist. There's no reason to think the world around us had to exist. If the universe had developed differently, then there might have been no stars or planets. It's logically possible that the universe might have not existed. It doesn't exist necessarily, it exists contingently. If the universe might not have existed, why does it exist? The only adequate explanation for the existence of a contingent universe is that its existence rests on a non-contingent being, something that cannot exist because of the necessity of its own nature. It would exist no matter what. So everything that exists has an explanation of its existence, either in the necessity of its own nature or in an external cause. But what about our second premise? Is it reasonable to call the explanation of the universe God? Well, what is the universe? It's all of space, time, reality, including all matter and energy. It follows that if the universe has a cause of its existence, that cause cannot be part of the universe. It must be non-physical and immaterial beyond space and time. The list of entities that could possibly fit this description is fairly short, and abstract objects cannot cause anything. Leibniz's contingency argument shows that the explanation for the existence of the universe can be found only in the existence of God.